Lord, it's our prayer today. It's our prayer today that these words would ring true in our lives. Father, the first three clauses of the verse are assertions of fact. I do, in fact, make space for what I treasure. I do, in fact, make time for what I want to do. So God, above the studying, above 2K, above FIFA, God, above the primping and prodding and caretaking of myself, I am declaring that you have priority. So I invite you now to live in me, knowing that there is one more assertion of fact, that God, I will make room for you and only you. We thank you, God, for giving us the spirit-filled opportunity to make this declaration today, and we ask that you the binding agent that brings it to fruition. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So all, all good things must come to an end. And uh, I want to I wanna thank you all for rocking with me this week. It has been my pleasure to be here with you. And it's been fun. Um, but like Paul, I, um, I would be really, really upset, Jose, if... I would leave this space and and in, in, in some years down the road, walk heaven's streets and look around and not see some of your faces. It would kill me to know uh, that I spent this time with you and we had not made adjustments necessary to make God your number one priority. In case, in case you don't you don't get it, in case you've missed it, I won't spend time here, but our, our, our entrance into heaven is not uh, rote obedience or uh, a, a rubric for which we should live our lives, but rather it's a one-on-one -on -one unconventional relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're talking about this week, making space in our lives for that to take place. And so I don't feel like I should have done more with you all. I want to give you this passage of scripture. It's found in Numbers chapter 25, um, and it's not typically associated with making room. Um, but the Knicks traded Porzingis last night. <sighs> so I'm very, I'm very sad. Uh, those of you who don't know uh, NBA, just, just vibe with me for a second. But um, uh, Chris Das Porzingis was the best player the Knicks, the New York Knicks, uh, have seen in several thousand years. And... Um, <laughs> He, uh, he requested to be traded, and, and they did. Traded him to, to Dallas. And so now Porzingis is dead to me, uh, as is Jeremy Lin. They no longer matter to me. And, and uh, th this is, it sounds like a joke, but it's serious. I, I have to remove from myself and my space those things that seek to kill me. And since Porzingis has joined uh, the Dallas Mavericks, uh, and, and I heard a woo, I'm praying for you. Um, he will now be my enemy. He's not Boston, you know what I'm saying, Boston. But, but he's still, calm down, Boston. He's still, um, he's still an enemy. He's still trying to take the ring from my team. And so if I see Porzingis on the streets, I must break his ankle. I have to. I have to. I got to kill those things that are trying to kill me. And, and I've noticed, right, that we, may, maybe it's the New Yorker and me, I don't know what it is, but, but not everyone has adopted this mentality of, of the notion that, man, things that are trying to kill me have to be killed. I must kill those things that have set out to destroy me. What I find often is we ask God to share spaces with the things that are trying to kill us. 
we ask God to, 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 to bide with us and, 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 and to just understand that there's some things that are trying to destroy us, but we like them a little bit too much right now. And so, God, I, while I'm working on it, while I'm trying to fix it and trying to massage it and make it feel good and sound good to you, could you do me a favor and just get used to staying in the same space with these things? And I, I feel like God's a New Yorker because I feel like when we speak to him like this, he's like, nah, fam, ain't no way, doc. I, I, I cannot, in fact, he, he says, he says in, in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, he says, I cannot abide iniquity and solemn assembly. Let me break that thing down so it's not so theological. He says, fam, I'm not going to rock with you because you go to church on Sabbath and balance it out with all the stuff you do throughout the rest of the week. I'm not handing out brownie points because you were in the front row lifting your hands in worship. Because I saw where you were before you got to. I can't abide the two of them, fam. So I'm going to need you to pick one and make room for whatever that is. If it's me, cool. If it's not me, cool. But, but, but I'm going to need you to choose ye this day whom you will serve. Pick one. And, and, and this story, it, it so breaks it down really quickly. In, 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 in Numbers chapter 25, there's a story uh, about a man uh, named Phineas. And I want to read really quickly just kind of one verse, and then we'll walk through the text, and I'll get out of your way, right? So, so verse uh, 11 in chapter 25 of Numbers, the Bible says, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned away my wrath from the sons of Israel in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them so that I did not destroy the sons of Israel in my jealousy. So, so, so plain English, God says, man, somebody put your hands together for Phineas. Because Phineas, the grandson of Aaron, looked at what was happening and he was jealous for me. Phineas said, yo, God, God shouldn't have to stand this thing. It's, it's the equivalent of, of, of me walking around here holding some of y'all hands and my wife is sitting right here looking at me. And someone says, Jasmine shouldn't have to tolerate this. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to cut BC's hand off. Because Phineas was filled with jealousy on behalf of God. Well, for what? What are you talking about? I'm glad you asked me. The Bible opens up in this passage in, in chapter 25 and tells us that Israel was in a place called Shittim, right? It, it's it's, it's the, 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 the last, it's the border, the precipice of the promise. They were about to walk into what God had promised to give them all these years ago. And while they're here in this place, Shittim actually means the place of thorns, by the way. Um, while they're in this place, ensnared in the thorns, the Bible tells us that Israel began to mess around with some of the tribes in the area. The Moabites came and they got them to worship their gods. They got them to, 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 to sit in their temples and to, to adopt their practices. And so now while they're Israelites in name, they're actually living like Moabites. They're worshiping Baal and they're, they're, they're doing all of these other things that God does not recognize. And he's really, really upset. God's really upset. He says, fam, I'm not going to share this space with any other God you have erected, any other plan you have, situation, circumstance. I'm not doing that. So here's what's going to happen. Every one of you who is causing other individuals to worship Baal, Moses is about to come find you and murk you. They're going to take you out into broad daylight so everyone can see, and they will put you to death because I'm not sharing spaces. God is so upset. He says, this, this, this thing has to be removed from my camp. In fact, the Bible, it, it implies that the wrath of God was so infuriated that a plague was moving through the camp and people were dying, just dropping dead. And God says, yo, you want this plague to stop? Take every person who took someone by the hand and walked them into Baal's temple, take them and kill them. Then it'll stop. That's the context we're in, right? And so now in the middle of this context, right, the Bible says as Israel, as Moses and Aaron and other people 
are weeping, are crying about what God has said has to happen, about the people that are dropping dead in front of them. They're standing in front of the tent of meeting, the place that Moses had established for anyone who wanted to talk with God, wanted to sit down and share Starbucks, uh, just wanted to vibe with him. This spot, anyone could walk in and talk with God. They're crying in front of the tent of meeting. And the Bible tells us that while this is happening, while the leaders of Israel are crying, while the the, the, the perpetrators are being gathered up and prepared to be put to death while people are randomly being dropped dead. While all of this chaos is happening, the Bible says in verse 6 that one of these sorry men said, it's not enough. And he goes and he finds his Moabite girlfriend. And they walk in to the side door of PMC in the middle of Sabbath service. Pastor Dwight is, is, is preaching a rousing sermon. Chaplain Bourget is the illustration, so he's standing like this. He's, he's the cross. I see it. No? Okay. In the middle of this sermon, all hearts being pulled, the Bible says that this man walks in with his girlfriend. They undress themselves right here. And they begin... To violate God's sanctum. These two individuals are saying, God, we want you to share so much that we're going to walk into the place that you have set aside to meet with us. And we're going to meet with each other in this space. Yo, God's like, <laughs> word, Moses? This this what we about? Aaron, this, this your man's? Cool. Because I've gotten to the point now where I recognize that you have decided that you're going to be so comfortable harboring and holding on to the things that are killing you. Remember now, there's a plague currently going on because of what they're doing. You're so comfortable being ensnared in the place of thorns. You're so comfortable holding on to these little secret, quiet, as kept sins and, and these little practices and, and, and things that are actually killing you that you are bringing them into my space and asking me to adopt bunk bed living. And I'm a grown God. I need a king size. So cool. And what you will find is that the plague continued and people continued to die. And if I, if, if, I, if, if I were preaching a sermon, I would stop here and I would talk to you about the things that you're asking God to share spaces with in your lives that are killing you even now. The habits, the relationships, the conditions, the practices, the, 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 the thoughts, the, 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 the things that you do not want to let go of that are actively putting you to death. God, just share the space with it. God, just be comfortable living in my filth. But the Bible says, and here's what I love. The Bible says that there's this man named Phineas. In verse 7, Phineas, the grandson of Aaron, son of Eleazar, he's sitting down in the tent of meeting, or uh, uh, excuse me, in the congregation, and everyone sees what's going on, but Phineas is the only one who moves. And Phineas is mine. I can hear it right now. Phineas is like, yo, these cats is bugging. Like, I can't. I cannot believe that they would do this. Why, why, why they do it? Oh, no, no, not my God. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 no. I, ain't no way. Ain't no way. The Bible says that Phineas gets up from where he is. He runs around and finds a spear. Phineas picks up the spear. He walks into the tent of meeting. While they're doing what they're doing, the Bible says that Phineas picks up the spear. He drives it into the back of the man, out of the front of the man, into the front of the woman, out of the back of the woman, into the ground. Kills both of them on the spot. It's crazy, right? It's the Bible. And the Lord in that moment 
The Bible says that the plague stops immediately. Because Phineas, watch this now, because Phineas realized something that a lot of us have not yet grasped. Phineas said, this thing about to kill us, y'all. It's really about to kill us. Like all of us are about to drop dead right now on the border of the promise. All of us are about to lose our lives. And if it comes down to me or this, this thing has to go. But we've gotten comfortable. Let me not, let me not throw you guys under the bus. I've gotten comfortable saying, God, I love this thing enough that I'm not only asking you to share the space with it, but I'm cool letting it kill me in the interim. And I think it is, it is of utmost importance to inform you that this week we've, we've taken some big pledges. I'm going to make space for God in my life. I'm going I'm to move things around. I'm going to re recreate my life and, and restructure things so that God is the apex. But we haven't considered the fact that the room that we've made for God has some furniture that's killing us. And it'd be crazy for you to think that the things that are killing you should be treated with love and adoration. You know, I'm done. Nobody ever says when you're swimming in the ocean and a shark bites you on the leg, no one ever gets mad at the people who survive by punching the shark in the face. No one's ever like, what do you, you punch the shark? You, you punch the shark. Don't you know people are, 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 are killing sharks for their fins? You punched it. Fam, this much of my leg is gone. And the rest of me would be gone too if I did not take immediate action. Nobody's ever concerned with the person who's wrestling a bear that's trying to claw its throat open. Because we all understand that when things are trying to kill you, you know, what's, what's the saying? Kill or be. But we would rather coddle the things that are eating us from the inside out. And God says, okay. If you want me to share the space with this 25-foot great white shark that's currently eyeing your innards, okay. But I want you to know that it will kill you. It will kill you. And so here's what you need to do. In the spaces you've created for God, you need to fervently and without remorse defend against those things that seek to destroy you. That's what I want to give to you today. I want to lay before you that there are some things in the rooms you've made for God that are currently putting you in opposition with him. That are currently destroying you. And I want you to be active. I want you to be proactive in destroying those things which seek to destroy you. I make space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities. And Jesus, I have not decided which one means more. So I will consider making room for four of us. I want you in this polyamorous relationship with me. Or we can recognize that death is at the door. And we can partner with God to destroy those things that seek to destroy us. So all those in this space, even praying about God, uh, how to make uh, room for God practically in your life. You've been taking steps this week to put some things aside. But you've been pricked today to say, look, there's some things in my life, in my relationships, in my spaces that has to die. If you're in this space 
and you feel filled with a Phineas spirit. Stand to your feet with me. Let's pray. Only those who today are saying, I'm putting some things to death. Only those who are declaring today, I will for real make room. Father, you see us standing on the, the, the border of our promises, God. We're standing right in the spaces that you want to take us, but we're being held back. We're being destroyed. We're being killed, God, by the things that we have allowed to share space with you. Those things that we cannot let go of yet, those things that we love too much, we desire too much, we're holding on to them, God, with white-knuckled ferocity. We're asking today that you would give us a distaste for them. We're asking, God, today that they would become Laodiceic to us, God, that we would spit them out of our mouths because we, dis we, 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 we have such disdain for them. I'm asking today, God, that you would give us a passion and a heart's desire for you and you alone. God, give us the same jealousy of Phineas, the jealousy that you have that says, my God cannot share me with anything else, God. And those dangerous those destructive, those disordering things in our lives which seek to destroy us, I ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus that today that we would raise our proverbial spiritual spears and we would put them to death in the places where they lay. God, don't let us be destroyed so close to everything you've ever wanted to give us. And we will be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for rocking with us today. We are concluding today. We will have our final session, 730 this evening. We really appreciate all of you being here. You are dismissed. But for those who need special prayer, special time, attention, our prayer team is down here in the front. They are ready, willing, and able to pray for you. God bless you. Grace and peace.